together, patience and cooperation, inside mask wearing, which is strongly recommended, sitting outside is an option, and most importantly, praying for one another and for an end to the pandemic. For communion, please form a single line at each communion station. When you receive communion, take a step to the side, consume the body of Christ, and then move back to your pew. Please do not consume while you are walking away. And thank you for remaining until the end of Mass. Have a beautiful Mass. Good morning and welcome. I invite you all to please stand and open your hymnals to our opening number 115, 115, all of them.
of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins. Especially where perhaps what is driving us is perhaps not so much the divine will or the will of God, but just the human will. What I like, what I want, what I desire, just as what we will be listening in today's gospel. In this light we say, I confess Almighty God to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, grant that we may serve always conform, that grant that we may always conform our will to yours, and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of this. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many and their guilt he shall bear. The Lord, the word of the Lord.
a reading from the book. Oops, sorry. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been similarly tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to them, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? He answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. And Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? He said to him, We can. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. And Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, 
that to serve and to give his life is the ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says, the rulers of this world, or what the text says, the rulers over the Gentiles, lord it over them. And their great ones make their authority over them felt. And then Jesus makes a counterculture to this way out being in authority. What is this way? Lording it over them. What's the other way? making one's authority over them felt. And then, the counterculture of meaning, Jesus says, but it shall not be so among you. And then so that this would be understood, and Jesus made it explicit. In what way? He says, Whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. And then, Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. That's the mind and the heart of God in and through Jesus. The way of being great, the way of being first, the way of being a person in authority, the way of being a ruler. Not the way of dictatorship. Where's the dictatorship here? Lording it over them. Isn't it? Another word for that is control. It's very familiar. And what's happening today all over the world, isn't it? Anyway, today, as the Vatican opened the, what is called a synod, or a synodality, as to explain that word. Synod, uh, they come from two Greek words. Syn is from, is why in cum in Latin with, meaning together. Synod or odus, like ex odus or exodus, the way, meaning, when we say synod, walking together. And all dioceses all over the world also open today, the synod on synodality. We do not know this much, except perhaps, of course, if you read it somewhere, or you went online, or perhaps now, as I'm telling you, we don't know much of this because I have not even found us or a prayer just like 
For one whole year before the opening of the Second Vatican Council, we were praying to the Holy Spirit to guide the Council. How it would be really good. There is a prayer by the Universal Church, by the local church, for every one or for each parish during this Sunday Mass to pray, either before or after Mass. But anyway, in that absence, we can always pray. Pray that this will not be a synod, a walking together of what is called people of faith according to the human will. But a walking together of people of faith according to the will of God. Why is that important? Look in today's gospel. James and John, two people with apostles of Jesus, with Peter, of course, but Peter is not mentioned here, just James and John, sons of Zebedee. They came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us. What's that us? Me, myself, and I, meaning we. We want you to do for us. Whatever we ask of you. Where's the center there? The human will. So as the synod begins, in all local churches, when we say local meaning diocese throughout the world, we pray that this will be a journeying together, a people of faith, and there is no official prayer being prayed by the people, like in a Sunday congregation, we just pray on our own. From our hearts. In a way we can. To enlighten the church in the darkness of our times, that the people of faith, the people of God will walk together, again, not according to each one's will, but to the spirit that guides the church. Very, very important. Because how easy for this walking together to have what is called this or that kind of whatever perspective or line of thought according to the human will not according to the Spirit of God. So we pray for this. We pray that there will be conversions. We pray for that people will come back home to God. We pray that people will realize what Jesus says in John 15, Jesus says, abide with me. Well, so he invites, abide with me. Then he qualifies, for apart from me, you are nothing. So we pray for this sinner, as we pray for all of us. That this sinner is walking together, by the way, it, is, it will be a walking together of Idly of what is a document of each one, so each one will be involved. But truly, we will be on our bended knees, or if we cannot kneel, we will be people in prayer, storming the heaven and calling on the Spirit to bring light. Because how easy. Or anyone just like James and John, we want you to do for us 
whatever we ask of you. It's very easy. This James and John, what happened to them? Well, they are apostles, of course. They've been given retreats and seminars and recollections and whatever teaching and catechism and evangelization by no less than Jesus. They have been with Jesus. They have been learners of the way. That's what discipleship. And then the question they ask, we want you to do for us whatever. Look at that. Whatever. Whatever we ask you or we ask of you. Very arrogant. Very self-centered. So we pray for the sin. And whatever form this will take, this will take two years. We pray for the sinner that it will bring the people of God us. We know we are a priestly people. It will bring us to a life of deep, profound prayer and worship, not just here. Church in the parish or church in the community, we call this a family of families. But we pray that this synod will bring us to a life of prayer and worship, again, not just here as family of families, but in the church, in the family, in the home. Praying not just with whatever we are, our usual way of praying, the rosary and other devotions, but praying especially with the Word of God. In the home, because that's church in the home, we pray that this synod will bring every family converted into, not just of course, not just remaining as a family, but converted, transformed, changed, renewed into church in the home. What is that? A family in prayer and worship, a family in catechesis, in evangelization, a family in fellowship, in service. And why is that crucial? Why is this walking together, synod, in the home, crucial or foundational because familiaris consortium number 86 put forward by the late Saint, Saint Pope John Paul II in 1981 says the entire humanity passes through the family so there is no civilization there is no humanity without the family how foundational is this Therefore, this is where synod should begin. But how, aside from that, why is this crucial? Because again, the same Pope, John Paul II, six years after said, whatever happens to the family, there goes the nation and the world in which we live. Why is this important? Walking together under God, seeking the will of God, hopefully feeling the movements of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in the family. Why is this crucial? Because if we believe in private revelation from Our Lady of Fatima, we believe in what Sister Lucia de Santa said, in the late or well, early 80s, what she said in a long handwritten letter to Cardinal Capara, she said, Father, so she called him Father, you know, so she said, Lucia de Santos, one of the three children of Fatima who did not die like the two children. I mean, she died later, but she became 
a nun, Car Carmelite order. She died on the 14th of February 2005, two weeks before Pope John Paul II died. Anyway, he said, she said, Father, the time will come when the decisive battle between the kingdom of God and the forces of darkness will be over marriage and the family. How prophetic, because before Cardinal Capara died in 2017, that's four years ago, Cardinal Capara said, this is happening now. Destroy the family, you destroy the church. I mean the church in what is called the family of families. Parish, diocese, universal church. It destroy the family, you do it, we destroy civilization. So this is where this sin should take place. I mean, should be really happening in the home, in the family. Looking for in what way we can engage in prayer and worship in the home. So that we will be we will bring again that famous slogan out Patrick Payton the family that prays together stays together. And a world at prayer is a world in peace. But is it only prayer and worship? No, that's priestly. Since we are a prophetic people, and therefore the family as a prophetic faith people or community will hopefully through this synod engage in catechesis and evangelization because what we have, what are happening, what has been happening is a counter evangelization. What do we mean by that? We have catechists here. We have volunteer catechists. What do we do? What do parents do? We just drop in or whatever. Leave my child or children there at 6 o'clock and then collect them at what, 7.30? Why? Because there are catechists. But in the church it says that the first catechist and the first teacher and the first evangelizer are not the voluntary catechists here. Not the Pope, not God, not the bishop, not the sisters, not the priest, but the parents. They are the first teachers and the first evangelizers and the first catechists. So we pray that this synod will bring the church in the home, the church in the family to catechesis and evangelization in the family. Why? Because the family, in relation to being a priestly people and a prophetic people, is a school of faith and a house of prayer. That's what the family is. A school of faith and a house of prayer. In fact, that is the first seminary. It's not St. Patrick or any seminary throughout the world. The family is the first seminary. So we pray that the synod will be for every family really helping one another in fellowship and service for what? All this as priestly as and prophetic and as kingly people, for what? In view of la vida eterna, eternal life. With God. Because if we miss that eternal life with God, there is eternal life in hell. Eternal life just the same. So we pray that this fellowship and service and this catechesis and evangelization and this prayer and worship, priest, prophet, and king in the home, synod on synodality will truly bring the family to a family under God, a family wherein the spirit is moving not just the children or the parents or each one, but it's God moving in the home. 
from time to his eternity. When this happens, because of our prayer, there will be a renewed church, meaning parish level, because this is a family, a family. There will be a re renewed church, meaning local church, meaning the diocese. There will be a re renewed church, meaning, or transformed, a renewed church, according to the mind and the heart of God. Universal church. Why? Because whatever happens to the church in the home, there goes the parish and the diocese and the universal church in which we belong. So Pope Francis says, this synod and synodality is from bottom up. Okay, let it be. From the grassroots to the throne of God. Great. And then therefore, we have to storm the heavens with our prayers for this sinner. Because yes, we are living in time. But the church is not just it's a historical reality. How people on every level of the church can always be in relation to not the divine will, but the human will, just like Peter and John, or Peter and James, telling Jesus, Teacher, we want you to do for us what we ask of you. In other words, we pray for the sinner that for every family, God will be the priority and God will be the center. Please rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten of me, constant control with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Supper death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with his faith. He ascended into heaven. I am seated to the white man of the heart. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of God, our faith, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the fathers. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Placing our trust in the Lord, let us confidently approach the throne of grace without Christ. that Francis our Pope and Myron our Bishop will lead the holy, faithful people of God in the Diocese of Stockton through the celebration of the Synod and will help us discern God's will and boldly carry it out. We pray to the Lord. Lord 
that the Lord will show kindness to Christian missionaries throughout the world and sustain them in their call to humble service. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord will show kindness to prospective ministers in the church and call them to lives of service. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord will show kindness to rulers of nations and preserve them from self-righteousness. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord will show kindness to all who have completed lives of service to humanity and bless them with a long and fruitful retirement. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord will show kindness to families, especially those suffering from division. We pray to the Lord. Lord, that the Lord will show kindness to victims of the pandemic, wildfires, famine, war, drought, disasters, and disease, and bring them help in their need. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord will show kindness to those who have died, including Pilar Caracena, and will give them eternal rest. We also pray for pandemic, wildfire, and natural disaster victims. We pray to the Lord. Lord God most high, you are gracious and merciful to all your people. Hear us as we call upon you this day. God bless the Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. May brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. <clears throat> Once, Lord, we pray sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysterious reserve 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. white and just, our good and our salvation. Always in the brief word to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death. Summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with our archangels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, he with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without and we are now a play. Founds of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, his, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, ah, you will drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
Word of forgiveness, I've seen. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chance of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And as Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day our deliverance. As we forgive those who trust and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await a blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I give you, my peace, I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb.
be seated. Let us pray. <clears throat> Who art, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this prison age, and prepare for gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Good morning. We, uh, every year we have a financial report in the bulletin, uh, and so you can find it today and uh, here. Um, every year about this time we have that financial report, and so uh, we try to explain that. So Kathy Schrader, the chairperson of our pastor, our finance council, is here to explain just a little bit about the, uh, the good news that we're doing pretty well considering the difficult times we're in. Good morning. As Father said, I'm Kathy Schrader, Chairman of the Parish Finance Council, and I've been blessed to serve on the Council for over eight years, and I have enjoyed working with our pastor and our other parishioners that are on the Council. The annual financial report for the fiscal year July 2020 to June 2021 is inserted in your um, book bulletin it was also included in the email blast this weekend. The report is a combination of a listing of revenues and expenses, along with some visual graphs. A letter is also included with a more detailed explanation of the dollar amounts. As the report shows, we are currently in a good financial position. This is due to several factors, but the most important factor is the one of your generosity as our parishioners. Through the quarantine, which affected our ability to gather in person, your generosity and commitment to Presentation Parish remains strong. We also benefited by a payroll protection loan, which was offered to um, businesses, and the clergy and staff were also committed to minimizing expenditures while still providing spiritual needs and the support that you expect from your parish. 
As a council, we plan to address the many large deferred maintenance projects for our parish facilities, which are now over 20 years old. We will continue to monitor our financial strength as we address these deferred maintenance items, along with the need to set aside some reserves for the uncertain future. On behalf of Father Mark, our parish clergy, and staff, I would like to thank you very much for your continued support and generosity of our parish. And please continue to help us build a vibrant community. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And um, speaking of vibrant community, we have a green uh, popping up outside. The tables represent all of the ministries that we have to remind us that at this time of year, we sort of have our stewardship renewal. We ask everyone to participate in the next year for the next calendar year uh, in not just giving, but also serving and praying. And so uh, after Mass, you're welcome to uh, stop at a table and uh, find out more about uh, the different ministries. We have several announcements. We have faith formation for adults available, not just for the catechism of children, but um, we have our, we had a women's retreat yesterday, very nice, and we have our men's group, which meets every Saturday morning, and uh, that man is you, and also we uh, have Father Joe on Monday nights, is um, uh, speaking um, every Monday night about the Eucharist, about the Mass, and in the Bible, and so uh, information in the bulletin about these activities. We also have a Biblical Hebrew class, believe it or not, it's gonna start, and it's gonna be five classes to learn a little bit about how to um, understand the, the ancient language that the Old Testament is written in, in Hebrew and it's a rare opportunity not too many universities around here even off of that so uh, it's, a, it's a good opportunity there's information in the bulletin next Saturday night is our Knights of Columbus spaghetti dinner that's starting up again and you can buy tickets at their table which is right out here and we have a second collection today for our parish school scholarship fund um, uh, to keep Catholic education affordable for our families. And next Sunday is one of the most important Sundays for giving for the poor. It's World Mission Sunday. So please be generous in the second collection next Sunday as well. Today is Sunday, which is the Lord's Day, right? It's not my day. Uh, it's His day, right? And so, uh, but you give Him one hour and He gives the rest of it back to you, right? And uh, so the rest of the day. But if you can spend a little more than 60 minutes today, please do stop by, uh, get some coffee and donuts at the coffee shop that's here. And you can, uh, there's tables there, but you can also walk around. Or you start on this side and visit the tables and then go for coffee afterwards. Uh, but we hope that you will stop by some of the tables. Even if you, you know, you can stop and ask questions, take some of the brochures, um, find out, sign up, whatever. But uh, even if you can't, just ask, you know, can, is it once a week, your meetings, or once a month, or can I be an auxiliary member, uh, different things, you know, I can't come during the week, uh, or if you just stop and visit the tables just to find out what we have here at our parish offering, wonderful things. We have um, uh, prayer groups, we have uh, sort of social groups, we have fraternal groups, we have charitable groups, wonderful things going on. So um, just to, you know, be proud to be Catholic and find out what we do here at our parish. Just so go out and uh, visit uh, if you can. We especially need men for some of the things. We need uh, catechism teachers who are good role models, uh, male role models. Uh, we're looking for ushers, um, um, altar servers, lectors, uh, communion ministers, not just in mass, but for the sick going out to, we're training people now to bring communion to uh, the shut-ins and to the sick. Uh, we need media people know, who know technology uh, to help maybe from home. You could help with part of the bulletin, things like that, if you're creative or you can write. We need people to be like baristas in the uh, Holy Grounds coffee shop if you want to help with that. Lots of different things. So please stop by tables uh, after Mass today. God bless you and have a nice day. your hands and pray for God's blessing in this solemn blessing in ordinary time. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in His sight. 
Pour out in abundance upon you the, the riches of His glory and teach you with the words of truth. May He instruct you in the gospel of salvation and never endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ and be one in His Spirit because you are sent for this mission. Our closing in today is number 431, number 431, blessed be the Lord.